Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be talking about TEC stacking or cascading and we're also going to, going to talk about uh, parallel TECs. So the pictures we have here are of some stacked TECs and we're going to talk about what kind of impact that has on the device as a whole and then we're going to, com going to compare that to uh, TECs in parallel. So cascaded TECs are essentially TECs physically placed on top of each other and you can buy them and they generally look something like this. Now you can just do this manually with your own TECs, you don't need to buy one uh, that is cascaded or stacked, but they do make them. Now you will notice that when you look at the specifications of them they will all move a very small amount of power generally and that the delta, which is the maximum difference between the two sides, this thing here, between here, and here, is greater than the delta from here to here, which kind of makes sense, because uh, this this TEC is cooling this TEC. However, you won't end up with a delta twice as much. So normally you're going to get a delta of about 60 to 70 degrees per each layer, per one of these, about 60 to 70 degrees. But when you put uh, one, uh, two on top of each other, or one on top of each other, you can obviously stack more than two, the delta does not become twice as much. And that is because, as I explained in the first episode in this series, the, the delta, the maximum difference between the two, two sides, is achieved when no heat is being transferred. Now, when you have TECs that are stacked, that's not actually possible. That's because, well, this, this layer here might have a 60 degree delta. It will be using, I don't know, let's make up something, 50 watts. Now that means this layer down here is not moving nothing when this layer is moving nothing. It's now moving the 50 watts. So the delta across the second stage, I'm assuming that your, your load is getting applied to, to this, uh, is the maximum it can achieve is reduced because it's always moving 50 watts of electricity when it's actually doing nothing. Uh, TECs that are in parallel are essentially TECs that you just put next to each other physically. And the effect on that is that's just essentially the same as having a greater Qmax. So if this has got 100 Qmax, and this has got 100 Qmax, that's supposed to be max, then the combined total is 200. However, in this situation, the Qmax will be less than the combined total of each stage because uh, they are obviously on top of each other so the second one has to move all of the heat applied to the top one plus all of the electricity the top stage moves and that is why you will normally find that the top layer is less powerful and you'll commonly see them stacked like this, where they're reducing. Now, if you find them like that, they'll generally be extremely gutless TECs, and this one is a completely gutless one. I mean, it's actually relying on the conductivity of the ceramic plates to the modules out here, which is not the world's greatest conductor of heat, but these, I think this one's only 13 watts total this whole module. Whereas this one here is 50 watts. 
and it's got a more logical path to transfer the heat from the top couples to the bottom stack of couples. So let's have a look at some of those examples in um, with the calculator. So we're going to start with parallel TECs. Now this calculator already actually has an option for multiple TECs. I think we're going to stick with uh, just one and we'll use each calculator to pretend that it is each of the TECs. So for a start Let's assume we've got uh, 200 watts, and we've got one TEC. So this one's not there. And we can see that, that um, we achieve a 33 degree delta. We're using, um, sorry, we're using almost 800 watts of power. Now if we went to two parallel TECs, or TECs next to each other, we can compare that. So that would be the same heat load shared across two TECs, which is now half, and this would be the result. Pretty, pretty logical. However, you'll find that that is not the same as um, one TEC moving all of the load. I'll just fire up another one. You'll see that it's actually not the same. If we turn that into two. Right. So We've now got, this one's moved, got two TECs, this one's got one, and you can see that the watts moved is the same, but the power used is significantly higher on two TECs than one. However, we are getting a better delta. So it, it really does depend on um, when's the best to use it. Now if we were to crank this up to say 400 watts, we can move that quite a lot. Now let's have a look. Right, with 400 watts, which is pretty close to its maximum for a single TEC, we're using nearly 900 watts of electricity, and we're only achieving a 300, uh, sorry, a three degree delta, which makes this pretty pointless. But with twice as many TECs, or 800 QMAX, we can still achieve a 32 degree delta, which is a good thing. We are, however, using an awful lot of electricity. But that's just the example of one TEC versus two TECs. You, um, it's effectively increasing the QMAX. When would you want to do it? If you are any, unable to get enough physical QMAX with one TEC, why not have multiple ones? Now, I realize that we've got this input voltage at 100%, and you would normally not run it at 100%, and the idea would be to go to multiple TECs and run them at a lower input voltage to increase the efficiency. And we'll talk about that now. So let's go back to our 200 watts, and we achieved a 32 degree delta. If we go back to 200 here, Okay, we've got a 47 degree delta, but we're using twice as much power. Now let's say we only wanted a 32 de degree delta. We could reduce the power greatly. I don't know, let's try 70. That's still more. That's still more. That's not enough. Okay, that's a good example. Now we see the difference, and this is where it gets used. Where, when, when we only had 400 watts of QMAX to move our 200 watts of heat, we had to run it at 100%, and it used an awful lot of electricity. 
Now, to achieve the same delta, we were able to use twi two TECs and run them at 52% to achieve virtually the same delta, but we have used roughly half as much power. And that means that you'll have to um, dissipate half as much heat to the environment and that means that the this, this, this system will be significantly better performing. You'll achieve an actual better delta because the thermal resistance of your copper, the water, your radiators will be only transferring half as much power. Well, it actually won't because, but roughly half as much power. So therefore, you will lo lose less of the delta to thermal resistance losses. So that's parallel TECs. Normally the idea is you you want to increase the Qmax so you can decrease the input voltage so you can increase its efficiency. And we can see that here and here. And this is pretty much, well, this one, two TECs is pretty much twice as efficient as a single one. Good news. So let's go back to TEC stacking. Okay. So we're going to, I guess, move them something like this. We'll go back to one. And so this indicates one TEC on top of the other one. So let's have a look at what will happen now. Okay, so we have the first stage trying to move 200 watts. And it is moving 200 watts. It's using 800 watts of electricity. And therefore the heat load is just under 1,000. Now we go to the second stage and we try and cool the first stage. And we will be trying to move 1,000 watts. And we'll try and calculate that, and it will scream, I don't think so, Tim. Because the maximum it can move is only 400 watts. Hmm. So you need to, well, I mean, obviously that's not going to work. So what can we do? Well, we can reduce the power of each one of them to something like that. All right, so now we're moving 200 watts. Electricity used is 155, we've got a delta of 12 degrees, and we've got a heat load of 355. I think that'll work. So now we can put in 355, and that will work. So this, whatever this one's outputting, then moving, and we can work out the delta. So the delta would be the combined total of two of, of, two of these. So the delta is going to be, what's that going to be, uh, 21-ish degrees while consuming 800 watts over here and 155 watts over here, 900 watts. Now that is uh, certainly quite a lot. And if we just compare that to a single one, we can achieve a better delta for less energy used, or electricity, than we can with two stacking. Now you can change all these numbers around and jimmy it around, you really shouldn't be running this at 100%, but you can see that stacking doesn't always work out. Well, actually, generally speaking, if you have a high Qmax, which if you're talking about computers and single 62mm TCs, uh, it pretty much doesn't normally work out that stacking will actually help, or well, certainly not at full load. Yes, uh, stacking TCs can result in a increase in delta, but it has the impact of reducing the maximum Qmax. 
which is counterproductive when we're limited to a relatively small Qmax of 400 relative to our load of 200. But something you can certainly play with and experiment with. Uh, lots of fun can be had, especially firing up the calculator and uh, moving all the numbers around to see if you can get it to work. There's absolutely no reason why, of course, you can't have three stages to the to the stack or the cascade. There's no reason why you can't have a TCs in parallel and a stack. And I believe if you have a, a large number of TCs in parallel and then stack to have, you know, thousands of QMAX, raw QMAX, and a number of stages, it, you can run these TCs in a, in a highly efficient or high co-op and move a small amount of energy because they're all in parallel and then you, then you can really see the benefits of stacking however you'd have to have a water chiller and it would actually cost an awful lot of money in TECs but it would be interesting to see if someone actually did test it out so hopefully you've enjoyed that so hopefully that makes sense. Parallel TCs is essentially just increasing the QMAX and the IMAX. In um, TC stacking is a lot more complicated. Essentially, you don't get the important things are you don't get twice the the delta if you put two TCs on top of each other and it results in a reduction in QMAX which is generally not a good thing if you're talking about a large load and a very small QMAX it's fine if you have unlimited space in a chiller but if you're talking about direct dying uh, block then maybe not so I hope you guys have enjoyed that uh, I hope that made sense, I hope it helped, and I'm, I'm hoping we're all learning things together so that we can make water blocks, chillers, fridges, uh, coke coolers uh, more effectively and do it once and do it right if we understand how all this stuff works. Well, I shall see you on the next one, guys. Bye-bye.